2020. Today I'll give you a short sharing of our current robot. So these are the contents I'll be going through with you today. As you can see, there's a few, uh, there's quite a few things. Uh, let's move on. This is our team for this year, 2020. Uh, there's nine of us. Uh, give you a short brief history. Uh, we started off with the Robocop Humanoid League since 2002. And ever since 2013, we have uh, moved on to Robocop at work. These are some of the examples of our robot for the past two years. These are our achievements over the past few years. As displayed, we have been quite active in the competition league with our most recent and proudest achievement in Robocop Asia Pacific 2019. This is a general overview of our robot. Uh, let me tell you some components that we have. Uh, we have two Intel RealSense cameras. We have two uh, LIDAR lasers. Uh, we have uh, two diagnosis level grippers. We have two, uh, uh, we have five, uh, we have a Kukam manipulator, uh, a base from a U-Bot platform, and uh, two uh, computers, Intel NUC and Xavier Jackson. Some of the capabilities of our robot include vision, which is uh, performed by our camera located both front and back. They scan for barrier tapes. Uh, uh, the front camera has additional two tasks, object detection and depth, cam a depth application for table height. Next is for leader sensors. Um, they are located both at the front and back and they detect obstacles and help the robot plan a path to avoid them. Uh, they are also used in recovery states. Finally, processing units. Our Intel NUC is the main brain of the robot, now providing greater processing speeds compared to our previous computer, the IPC3. The NVIDIA Jetson Xavier is an additional processing unit specifically just for deep learning. So this is our pick and place uh, depth calculation section. Uh, it is used, we implement the depth function for our camera to determine any height of the table using a simple formula. So as you can see here, uh, what y, z, and x represents is just a simple formula of y uh, subtracting z to form x that gives you a table height. Next is a special case shelf. Uh, our camera is uh, in a different position compared to what it was before. It's at a different angle. So uh, we use a simple trigonometric formula to determine uh, y1 uh, and then after that we just subtract y2 from y1 and produce our table height. Yeah, it's quite dynamic. So for this slide, for gripper, it is made out of uh, a 3D printed holder uh, with two dynamic servos to serve as the gripping and connected to two rubber fingers to serve as its fingers. Yeah, yeah. this gripper is, uh, compared to the previous model, is force controlled instead of angle controlled, reducing the chance of the dynamic servos being damaged from gripping larger items. Okay, arbitrary surfaces. So in previous competitions, objects are to be picked up uh, when they are placed on white surface tables. So the community has recently introduced arbitrary surfaces uh, on our tables during object pickup to simulate a more realistic environment similar to that of an industry. So we have applied deep learning to our robot to recognize objects on different arbitrary surfaces. Here are some of the examples as shown. So for deep learning, there are three steps to our deep learning process. Number one is we take uh, data of objects on different arbitrary surfaces, as you can see from this slide. Yeah. The second uh, step is labeling every part on of the image. So we use this software called label V8. Yeah. So we click on the name of the object and highlight the uh, image shown of the object and we save it. So once we saved it, uh, we put it all into our deep learning model. Uh, we use a YOLO algorithm to train our deep learning model. Yes. So all in all, the more data we feed into the model, uh, the more confident object detection will be. Additionally, it is assisted by our 2D vision for contours, hence increasing the percentage of our robot, able to perform and successfully uh, successful object identification and position. Yeah, for navigation, there are some scenarios where 
the robot is unable to plan a path uh, as is virtual representation potentially crashing into the virtual wall, but not in real life. The robot will then reverse from the wall it is stuck in, uh, giving itself a better angle. Yeah, some of the default uh, recovery states just include it rotating on the spot while clearing its cost map, relocalizing itself to find its true position. Yeah. So as you can see here, these are custom recovery states. There's only uh, four steps of it. Yeah, pretty simple. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for giving me this time. Now we go over and show you a short demonstration of our robot. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, yes, could you return to the slide with recovery states, please? Recovery states. Uh, so, uh, which uh, uh, soft recovery states at, uh, and which is aggressive recovery state? Uh, I couldn't get it pro properly. Oh, uh, so uh, the slide here uh, displays our custom recovery state. So in the, the, the default recovery state is the one that rotates on the spot and clear cost map and it uh, relocalizes itself. Uh, sometimes that uh, default recovery state does not prove effective. So we use this uh, recovery state instead. Uh, it, it initiates after the failure of the default recovery state. Yes. So this recovery state, uh, when met in an obstacle, unable to plan a path, it reverses to create a greater depth of view. Next, it uh, clears and rescans the cost map to relocalize itself to find its true position on the virtual map. And then it continues with its navigation as it is now able to move around the obstacle it was stuck in previously. Uh, so when you uh, step, step back, keep this uh, obstacle behind the robot, uh, will uh, the robot stop or uh, doing something because we have just the same issue and uh, if uh, this is an obstacle uh, behind the robot, so... Uh, oh, okay, I understand your question. Yes, so in a case where the obstacle is behind the robot, uh, I think you'll be able to get out of it by using its default recovery state. Because uh, what it does is that it rotates on a spot and clear cost map. And after that, you'll find out that uh, its front laser is, uh, that there's no obstacles in front. So it'll just move forward and continue its navigation. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, why did you um, start to, or why did you integrate the second RGDB camera in the back, um, is there a specific purpose or probably the recovery state strategy um, or what, what was the intention? Oh, uh, the intention for reverse is to uh, create a greater depth of view for the camera in front to be able to see what is before it. So it can relocalize itself to see where it is on the map and able to plan a, a proper path for it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. And now we are going to show you a short demonstration of our robot. Uh, uh, we have stopped. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much and congratulations for Thank the you. performance. Okay. What's the decision of the referees? And I mean all referees from all teams. Uh, just one question uh, regarding the restart. Uh, is the best one calculated? So for the objects uh, grouped and service areas switched or is it uh, added together? No, just the last one. And in this way, it's the best one, of course. So the team collected, if I count correctly, five objects. Um, so we have to consider 
the last part of the run. Okay, uh, but the minor collision from the first one is still in it or not? Okay. No, it's not in, in it, but the penalty is generated by ah. the multiplica multiplication with uh, zero um, points. Okay, five. thank you. Uh, one more question. Uh, the last object uh, was was placed uh, to the service area. Uh, we couldn't see proper, properly. Uh, manipulator stuck uh, at the last service area and uh, is it placed the object? What's the opinion of the other referees? As far as I'm able to tell from the video, I would say it was not properly uh, properly placed. Um, we stop the we press the object, which if we con on you will just hang there. Yeah. Uh, another question about the second last object on the far away service area. Was there anything yeah. placed there? I looked kind of away for a second. And the run has already started. Okay. Yes. You also can view from uh, camera six. Was camera six? Oh. All right, all right, Demonstration. The barrier tape was not known to the robot from the beginning. Greeting movement from yesterday's operation <laughs> was debugged. Yeah, so, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. It, um, non deterministic behavior, we all like this. Conditions would be, of course, a major collision, but I think we can tolerate this and consider the penalties for a minor collision here.
He got nothing, Lord. One it detected the ability. It's not included in your map. Um, as we has had the same procedure, the same um, avoidance method uh, some minutes before. Okay, our robot is returned to base. The run is over. Cool. Thanks for the presentation. <laughs> okay, just for clarification, we are more tolerant to the specific situation due to the specific